In the late 70s and early 80s, the Atari 2600 was your gateway to the arcades, featuring numerous ports of your favorite arcade classics. Some were really fun and enjoyable, and others, eh, not so much. This week, let's dig into some of the better Atari 2600 arcade ports on this edition of Friday Night Arcade. Jungle Hunt was developed and released initially for the arcades by Taito in 1982 and later ported to various systems including the Atari 2600. The story here is you play as Sir Dudley Dashley, a big game hunter who is camping with his wife when she gets kidnapped by local savages. I'm not making that up, that's language right from the manual. Dudley picked up the sound of jungle drums and translated them to read that today's soup du jour is English woman broth. Wow. So this guy's wife was kidnapped by cannibals and they're gonna cook her and eat her if you don't rescue her in time. You can save her in Atari Jungle Hunt, just like the arcade classic. <laughs> Fight man eating crocodiles. <laughs> Dodge deadly boulders. Oh, wouldn't you rather order out? Uh, out smart, hungry headhunters. I know a great little Italian play. Hi, <laughs> Jungle Hunt. Please. Jungle Hunt. That's messed up for a kid's game. Jungle Hunt consists of four scenes. Swinging from vines, swimming through a river overrun by crocodiles, running through the jungle dodging bouncing boulders, and then finally you have to get past two cannibals and rescue your wife. At a glance, this looks pretty basic, but keep in mind this is running on a system that was designed to play Pong, so it's incredible they got it to work at all. There's even some parallax scrolling in the trees of the jungle here. The controls are pretty straightforward, although don't confuse this with Pitfall, your character can jump much higher and further. Also, and this will feel weird at first, but you actually run from right to left instead of the other way around. If you're going for a high score, try to get through the game as quickly as possible as you get more points depending on how much time is left on the timer. The area that's most impressive to me is the river sequence. Dodging the crocodiles is pretty easy, but they even put in a breathing mechanic. You have to occasionally go back to the surface for air or your character will drown. You can either dodge the crocodiles or try to stab them with a knife by pressing the button, but the knife won't work if their mouth is open. Your character can also duck when avoiding the boulders, and really, the detail in your character here is pretty neat for the time. The first time through, you'll probably find this game to be pretty easy, you can rescue the girl in a couple of minutes, but have no fear, it's an Atari game and you get to start back at the beginning with increased difficulty every time you rescue the girl. Junior Pac-Man. So for the longest time, I've always thought of this game as Pac-Man Jr., but it's actually called Junior Pac-Man. I'm not sure why I had that in my head. Maybe that's because Pac-Man Jr. rolls off the tongue a little better? I don't know. Anyway, we all know the original Pac-Man on Atari 2600 was uh, an abomination, but Ms. Pac-Man in 1983 made up for it and is absolutely as good of a Pac-Man game as you could want on the console. Then came Junior Pac-Man in 1986. By this time, there were all sorts of arcade releases and iterations of the Pac-Man franchise. Pac-Man Plus, Super Pac-Man, Baby Pac-Man. By 1986, Atari 2600 games were getting pretty advanced, so you'd think it would be an even better version of Pac-Man, but that depends on what you're looking for. If you like Ms. Pac-Man but want something more challenging, then I'd say give Junior Pac-Man a try. This time, the maze takes up two screens that you scroll in between and everything runs faster. Pac-Man, the ghosts, it's all rapid movement and really ramps up the adrenaline. Seriously, this game is difficult. There's way more pellets and the ghosts actually seem to be smarter. They always find a way to corner you. From a technical standpoint, this game runs pretty well. The flickering ghosts are unfortunately back, but scrolling from one screen to another is smooth, and Pac-Man's movements and animations are solid. He even has a little rotating beanie cap on his head. There's fruit bonuses like before, and as the fruit moves around, it makes the pellets bigger, which makes them worth five times more points. But Pac-Man slows down if you grab the larger pellets, so it's a trade-off. If the fruit makes it all the way to one of the power pellets, it self-destructs. There's also seven different mazes to play through. On the one hand, I applaud the way the game runs on the system, but on the other hand, oof, this one is really tough. Pac-Man moves so fast, it's challenging to control him as you're going through the maze, the ghosts are way faster, the power pellets barely give you any time to eat the ghosts, and if the ghosts are off screen, you won't know where they are, making it tough to plan your next move. This game is only for the bravest of Pac-Man fans.
Centipede was developed by Atari and released on the home console in 1982 after about a year in the arcades. I had no idea this game had such a complicated backstory. A bunch of good elves lived in this enchanted forest and everything was hunky-dory, but their prized mushroom garden was infested with centipedes, fleas, and a dancing spider. The good elves tried everything and couldn't get rid of the pests until one day, an elf named Oliver discovers a magic wand in the garden. He was able to use the wand to destroy the spider, and thus, Centipede was born. You take up the mantle as Oliver tasked with ridding the elves' mushroom garden of all these pests, using your trusty magic wand. That seems excessive, couldn't they just call Terminex? Okay, so this is Atari 2600, so let's just get the graphical failings out of the way early. Oliver looks like a rectangle, the mushrooms all look like wafers, and the centipede looks like a series of interconnected flickering blobs. But if you can get past that, the game does play quite smoothly, and the elements of the arcade version are still very playable here. You can move around in the lower third of the screen, and you're trying to protect the mushrooms while taking out the centipede. The centipede slithers back and forth across the screen, a la Space Invaders, but with a twist. It can split off into multiple pieces, and it also deflects off the mushrooms. So even though you're trying to protect the mushrooms, sometimes it's a good idea to clean out some of the ones near the bottom of the screen, since the centipede can move at a jarringly fast speed, and the extra mushroom pieces make him that much tougher to hit. But eventually, the flea shows up and leaves more mushrooms, and he'll show up even more if you clean out too many of the mushrooms in the bottom area. And while all that's going on, this dancing spider is constantly chasing you around the bottom of the screen, and he keeps coming back no matter how many times you kill him. That stupid spider can go straight to hell. Thankfully, for every 10,000 points you rack up, you get an extra life. If you enjoyed the arcade version of Centipede, the Atari 2600 would very much have been worth your time in the 80s, and is still very playable and enjoyable today. <laughs> And if you liked Centipede, then there's Millipede, which was released a few years later in 1984. Bugs were a big problem in the 80s, and it was up to little kids on their Ataris to deal with it. If you felt like Centipede was too easy, then Millipede is the game for you, because it's basically the same game, but now with more mushrooms for the Millipede to bounce off of, more spiders, and other pests thrown in there like bees, and a swarm of dragonflies. Holy crap! <laughs> Too many of them. This time around, you've also got these DDT pesticide bombs sprinkled throughout the field that throw off pesticide gas for a period of time after you shoot them. With all sorts of stuff flying every which way, you'd think this game would suffer from a lot of flicker and slowdown, but it's impressive how smooth this thing runs. It made use of a 16 kilobyte game cartridge, which was massive for the time. My only complaint about this game is the death sound effect, and you'll be hearing it a lot. Tapper. Now here's a game that's totally appropriate for little kids. You play a frantic bartender trying to keep all of your customers served with beers in a rambling old-timey bar. You have to operate the tapper and slide the beers to the customers as they make their way down the table, and if they make it all the way to the edge, you lose a life. Okay, okay, so the home version switched out the beer for sodas and even has a Mountain Dew logo in the background, but we, we all know it was beer. The arcade cabinet had Budweiser logos slathered all over it, so as you're sliding the beers, or sodas, down the table, you actually get music in the background in one of the rare Atari games that had a soundtrack. It's a simple little tune, but it's pretty cool that they made this work. Once you make it past a wave of customers, you're treated to a minigame where the soda bandit shakes up all but one of the cans of soda. This is sort of a modified version of the cup game where you have to try to keep track of which soda hasn't been shook up. Pick the wrong one and it sprays in your face. Then it's back to serving customers again and of course, the difficulty continues to ramp up with more customers and occasionally the soda start ricocheting back to you and you have to catch them before they break. Fun arcade game and a well-made port on the Atari. Unfortunately, it's harder to find and significantly more expensive than your typical Atari 2600 cartridge. Today we're going up against the most feared commander, and everyone counts, even you quid. Man your ships, man your ships, man your ships. We're going in! Assume attack formation! All wings ready, sir. Okay, I'm peeling off, cover me, cover me! Hunter on that blue leader. Heavy fire, 17 degrees. Affirmative. This guy's good! Watch your back! We lost blue leader. I'm hit! Who's left? Quid! No! Quid, you're a credit to your cartridge. Galaxian, the arcade hit, now for the Atari 2600 system.
Galaxian was initially developed and released for the arcades in 1979 before later being ported to the Atari 2600. Fresh off the heels of Space Invaders and certainly a very similar looking bottom shooter, but different enough to be its own thing. First off, can we take a minute to appreciate some of the artwork that went into this game? Some of this stuff is just epic. Look at the colors and the detail. I could do a whole video just on the box art for some of these old Atari games. Anyway, you take up the mantle against the evil Galaxians, a race of beings bent on terrorism and warmongering according to the manual. At the time, this would have been a step up from the arcade version of Space Invaders because if you recall, the arcade version of Space Invaders was just a flat monochrome color scheme and enemies that only moved in a basic pattern, keeping the same formation the whole time. Galaxian featured multicolored enemies that start off in an attack formation, but random enemies will break formation and swoop down at you. At first, it starts off just one enemy swoops down at a time, but after the first wave, more and more enemies start swooping down to where it just goes bonkers. There's enemies flying all over the screen, and it's a lot of fun if you can manage to stay alive. This game also looks and sounds great. The details and colors on the enemies and their movements are all really smooth, even when you've got lots of enemies moving at once. The sound effects are also top-notch Atari 2600 goodness. Just awesome. Well, what did you think? What were some of your other favorite arcade games on the Atari 2600? If your favorite Atari game wasn't mentioned here, there's a good chance I may have already covered it on one of my older Atari 2600 videos as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please don't text and drive, and I'll see you next time on Friday Night Arcade.